Hi, and very welcome to Snape Talk. Today, we're going to dig into the details of motion analysis and how motion analysis can be used as a tool uh, or method to uh, maintain horse health at the best possible state and how you can use motion analysis as a team around the horse. My name is Elin Handund. I am a veterinarian and a biomechanist researcher. I'm also one of the co-founders of Slape. Slape is a digital technology. Uh, it's actually a software that you can use as an app on a smartphone. So looking at the screen here, we can see that it uses video from a smartphone to give you precise metrics of the motion pattern of a horse. And this tool is used by veterinarians all over the world to improve their lameness diagnostics. But motion is not only this. This is a very precise measurement of the biomechanics of the horse as it is trotting, and it gives us a measurement of how the horse is loading left versus right limb. But as a vet, when I see a horse in the clinic, it's actually the entire motion of the body that talks to me. And body language, which is what the horse uses to talk to us as well. So today we'll dig into the topic of body motion, and we'll do that together with um, Johanna de Boye, who is a Grand Prix dressage rider, and she will use, uh, she will come and join us later during the show. But first, I'm very, very happy to welcome uh, Maria Therese Engel. You are born into biomechanics and motion analysis, more or less. You are a veterinarian and a biomechanics researcher, and you're also the founder of Rider in Balance. Yes. Very welcome to the show. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your background. Um, you are not only a veterinarian, but I know you started your career with something as motion obsessed as dancing. Yeah, I, I chose to, to choose ballet until I was around 20 years old. And then I jumped into the veterinary medicine. And uh, I maybe have a bit of the background than many other veterinarians because uh, my father, he's been working with top athletes in Norway for all of his life. And I have, have, since I was a little girl, I saw him like training alpine skiers and golfers and uh, cross country skiers. And how could they like specify their technique to actually be able to win Olympic medals? So I, I have like a biomechanical background from like a, other types of sports as well. And uh, so it was kind of uh, important to me when I finished veterinary medicine that it was lameness examination that I wanted to specialize in. But when I started to work at the clinics, I thought that many of the horses that arrived at the clinic, they worked pretty fine. Of course, often we have those low degree of lamenesses, mm -hmm. but when, when the rider was put on, I felt like the system of the horse rider interaction was more complicated and often we could see like the 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 harmonious situation that I actually thought was in the horse, it was more disrupted. So I wanted so to do my by by the rider by the less. rider. Okay, so I, I I wanted to do my PhD in rider and horse rider interaction, and uh, now I do a lot of funny scientific work related to riders, but also lamenesses and human motion and yeah. So so uh, so that's wonderful. So you came in with this view of more or less body motion and precision and mm -hmm. uh, from a human athletic perspective, more mm -hmm. or less, when you look at both horses and riders. Mm -hmm. But how is it then? Tell us, um, if you compare motion analysis of a human and motion analysis of a horse, one is two-legged, one is four-legged. Mm -hmm. Do they have anything in common? I, uh, of course, uh, a moving object has a lot of in common if it's an airplane or a horse or a human. But I, I think uh, what is important to understand is that the human is very complex. It's like, Since we're walking on two legs, we have type of different strategies related to balance. Uh, but when it comes to the horses, we know that it's very difficult to analyze horse movement, but even maybe more difficult to analyze rider movement. Uh -huh. I could have mm -hmm. thought that they have four legs, these animals, <laughs> and maybe that makes it more complex. But mm -hmm. um, of course, we also know from science that, that horses are maybe a little bit more automated in their motion pattern, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so how, how does that differ, do you know, between a human and a horse? No, you know that the, the humans, we are what we call pyramidal. So it's everything we do, it's, it's, uh, it's constructed from the brain. So all the different information that we get from the sensory and cognitive information, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, the data computer in the brain creates the movement pattern based on what you have done a million times before. 
Um, but wait, does this mean the horse does not govern its motion from the brain? Of course it does, but it's more extrapyramidal than the humans. Oh, these so com- these are complex words. So does that mean, does it have to do with the neural pathways? Or? Yeah, so it's more of a data computer and spinal cord compared to the brain. Aha, so, okay. Mm-hmm. So in that brain. sense, uh, I would say that they are more primitive than the humans. Aha, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we often claim that as humans, I guess, that <laughs> animals are more primitive, but it might also have to do with motion. Yeah. Uh, but tell us a little bit more about um, how, like, I, I'm interested in, in really making motion analysis. Of course, mm-hmm. we can use technology like Slate, mm-hmm. um, but I know what you specialize in is also um, how to make this analysis in a systematic way with your eyes. Mm, and I think that is a very important task when it comes to motion analysis is that we need to stay into a structured analysis instead of like it's so uh, I, from ballet we often talk about art mm-hmm. and in rider and dressage riding we often talk about art but I think that art is something that you can bring down to measure it and have parameters and get values and mm-hmm. be objective in some kind of sense. And uh, to be able to do that, you need to have a structured analysis. And, and in when we analyze horses and when we analyze riders, we are doing it related to segment-based analysis. That means that we, like, we, can, we look at how the head is moving, how the trunk is moving, the pelvis, the legs, the feet in like separate segments, but also in related to each other. So you mentally chop up the body yeah. in yep. different pieces. Yeah, I would okay. say that. Yeah. But, but tell me, what, what, so if you chop, chop me up. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, if I would chop you up, I, I would say that I want you under, to, to understand what, how do you put your head related to the trunk. Okay, and head to trunk. Yeah, yeah, and the trunk to the pelvis and yeah. the pelvis to the legs, but you can also divide the legs into the, the thigh and the, and the knees and the feet. And then you want to evaluate all the different ways those segments can move. Okay, but when you know when we when analyzed the lameness exam, we had chosen to to actually look at some fewer parameters. We don't want to evaluate all the different rotations that the head and the the, the, the translational movement that the head can do. We want to pick out some fewer parameters, and that we know and is validated that we know that those parameters are the most important to to look at how the horse is moving asymmetrical or not. Yeah. But when it comes to riders, we can't do that. We, we can't just say that we can pick out fewer parameters and say that those are the only thing that is important to, to say if you're riding symmetric or not, or if mm. you are in balance or not. Mm. We, we need to look at the whole system and take every parameters into our analysis. But that's interesting. Yeah. Let's go back because we saw in the video that we had here, um, mm. a horse running, just trotting up the regular way that you would do as a vet when you're, when you're looking at a horse. And we mm. can see that it's trotting. And maybe we can say to those viewers who haven't seen this before that um, the curves that you see that are displayed, they do look at segments just like you do. Uh, They look at the pelvic segment and the head segment and exactly how those bounce up and down when the horse is running. And from biomechanics, we know that this is very related to horses. Mm. Um, Would it be as simple to do this kind of application for rider analysis? Uh, I would love to do that. I, I would say that if we are in the future are able to actually track all the different rotations and translational movements that we need to do to mm-hmm. be able to, to categorize the rider and ex- describe the rider as a whole. Mm. But that has not been done. And I know there is a different types of applications that has been not, that are on the market today, but none of these systems are able to actually give precise information of all of these different segments and all of its different movements. And if you skip some of those parameters, then you lose the information, Mm. which is maybe the most important for you compared to another rider. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so I get it. And also when a human is sitting on top of a horse, of course, what we know from this model that we use with sleep, it has to do with how limbs compress when it's running. And of course you're sitting in the saddle, so there might be a completely different dynamic. Um, and for sleep, of course, we should say also that the motion analysis that you get out is not um, sort of a performance analysis in terms of uh, how well the horse is doing the pee off, mm-hmm. but it's actually mm-hmm. really a health metrics that is used by you and me as veterinarians mm-hmm. when we work with horses in the clinic. Mm-hmm. Um, could you tell us a little bit about how you use sleep? Because I know you do in your uh, clinical practice. 
I, I have used sleep for a couple of years now, and I think it's a so important tool for me to be able to to always be objective. You know, the brain is a liar. We always, even though I want to stand in the clinic and be a veterinarian that is objective to the examination that I do, and you always put some emo emotions into it. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's so important to actually be critical to your own work. And that's what I say when you have trainers evaluating riders as well. You need to be able to have a tool that makes you more of a big objective in your anal analysis. And in the clinic, I use the slide for all the different, all the horses that we, that we do on examinations. And um, I think it's so valuable because I have the second opinion the whole time. I can go back and I can, can look at, did, did the slide app tell me the same as I think I saw? And uh, maybe sometimes I come in some sort of um, discussion with the data, yeah, yeah. but uh, then I can like ask myself questions like, why do I not agree 100% with the data? And how can, I, how can I think in a different way to understand why the data is presenting it like it is? Wonderful. So, yes, the yeah. measurements are the measurements, right? It measures mm -hmm. what it measures. Mm -hmm. And then you yourself as a veterinarian need to take that data in. And as you say, I love yeah. that, that saying that you sort of, in a way, discuss with the data, you use the data. Mm -hmm. And we know from publications also that um, it's been shown that veterinarians that know that a horse has had a block, for example, mm -hmm. are much more prone to say that it has improved yeah. when you look at it a second yeah, yeah. time. So as you say, the brain is for sure a bit of a, a, bit of a liar. Yeah. No, that's true. And, and, and I think that um, it's, it's so important to, to understand that the, the app is, is giving me precise information, which I, I need to trust. I trust the data. But sometimes I see the animal as more of only those data. So then, then I need to understand why does the data say what it says and why am I seeing the animal as I do? So it gives me the, the ability to discuss with my own brain. And I think that's pretty smart sometimes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I think continuously learning because you need yeah. to challenge yourself and that's not always easy. Yeah, it is important. So as you hear, um, biomechanics, biomechanics is, is a topic, well, partly it's a topic for geeks uh, that are very, very <laughs> interested in motion and motion analysis. But it is actually very useful. And um, we will go now into a section where we'll see um, one of the Swedish uh, dressage riders at Grand Prix level, Johanna de Boye, who's actually also using biomechanics and motion analysis for her performance horses. My name is Johanna de Boye and I'm a Swedish international dressage rider. And I also train students and horses here at home on a daily basis. For me as a rider and a question, I think the most important thing is to keep my horses happy and healthy. Uh, in my opinion, no horse really chooses to be a competition horse. My horses loves it, but I also want to keep their life as natural as possible by giving them plenty of field time in a normal big grass fields and also by adjusting the workload on my horses and uh, also uh, training them in different ways. I can prevent injuries and uh, keep them healthy and happy for the future sport. A few years ago, I met Maria Therese uh, and her company, Rider in Balance, um, while we were doing a um, movie session with her and trying out all of her skills. And uh, from that day on, I was hooked. I was really impressed by her work because I could really feel a big difference on my horses when I actually helped them. Yeah, doing the exercises instead of <laughs> maybe leaning the wrong way and making the work di more difficult for the horse. So from that day on, uh, we kept in contact and now since a few years I am an ambassador. And uh, with Rider in Balance, I know it's so important that I have the right position and I can help my horse uh, while riding and in that way also prevent injuries. I got in contact with SLEIP uh, through my veterinarian, Johan Lenz, and a couple of years ago we started to slate my horses. And Macy, for example, who is my Grand Prix horse, she's competing and she's doing quite heavy workload. I check her up a couple of times every year and uh, by having the SLEIP information on her we can easily detect if something um, looks odd or different from before. So uh, it's a great way just to have an objective sight of what's actually going on with the horse. Working with these two companies, Slape and Rib, I'm excited to see what the future will be like because I feel that every time I get a little bit more education within these two 
uh, subjects, I, uh, I can feel that I'm even more on the right track to becoming a better rider and a better horse person. My name is Johan Lenz and I'm an equine practitioner working with uh, lameness and poor performance in uh, sport horses as my uh, main interest. I'm using SLAPE uh, in all my lameness exams and uh, that's a way to check myself. I like the objectivity and uh, to have the challenge in my subjective uh, analysis. And uh, then uh, we also use SLAPE to monitoring sport horses. It's an objective way to see then over time, you don't have to remember the way they move, but uh, you have a clear picture of them. Objective gait analysis has been around for a while. The uh, human eye is always going to be less correct than the objective gait analysis. And to have somebody looking over my shoulder uh, challenge me and correct me in my assessment is both exciting and it also helps me to become a better bet. For the high-level competition horses, for example, I use Slape together with Johanna. We assess the horses every time they come to the clinic. That gives us a clear uh, view of uh, the asymmetries that they got and uh, can easily pick up if there are any changes. And that helps us to uh, really know when uh, correct training, do a more thorough lameness exam, or when they are fine to go. With Slape, I think the team will uh, easier monitor horses over time uh, with the possibility to send data, uh, slave them at home and send the data to, to me. And uh, it also will be easier to, uh, when you're working with physiotherapists, to come to agreement in what way the horse is not moving well and also follow up after physiotherapy and see if that really improves the horse movements. So uh, I think the whole team will benefit from it, but I think it's really, really important to uh, be careful with the data and analyze it together as a team. In the future, I think SLAPE and all the data uh, that is collected will really improve the way that we understand horses' movements and uh, the difference between lameness and asymmetry. Uh, we will become better vets. Uh, we will prevent more uh, lamenesses and train the horses better. So I find it very exciting using uh, objective gait analysis. Very welcome to the studio, Johanna de Boye. Thank you very much. So we can hear in this segment that your life is probably very busy because you're not only a Grand Prix de rider, but you also have a lot of students that you train yourself. Yeah. yeah. And I guess you also then have more than one horse. Um, tell us a bit about your life and how it looks. Yeah, I um, I run my stables. Uh, yeah, at my family's yard where we have ten horses at the moment, and uh, my days are full with riding. Uh, and then in the afternoon and in the evening, I'm teaching a lot of students also. Yeah. So Maria Therese, you told us earlier about your background with uh, looking at all these different human athletes. And I must mm -hmm. say, when I when I look at Johanna's life and I hear this, you have then your your own training, the training of your horses. How many horses do you have? Yeah, 10 at the moment. 10, ten yeah. horses. And then you train students at the mm. same time. It, there is a bit of a different challenge, I think, for the top mm. riding athletes if yeah. you compare to other human athletes that would maybe, I would say, only mm. <laughs> train their own bodies mm. in yeah. different conditions. Yeah. So um, given that life situation mm. and, and what you try to manage, and you also tell us in the, in the video here that mm. you're very curious and you try to learn more about human biomechanics and horse mm. biomechanics. Mm. But implementing these ty types of sort of new technologies or new ways of seeing how you train, how do you navigate sort of that jungle <laughs> of things that are available to you and make time yeah. for it? Yeah, the, the make time part is maybe the most uh, challenging uh, because, yeah. um, well, I wish it was more than 24 hours. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, I think you have to stay very curious, but also critical to see what can actually make a difference for you uh, and uh, yeah in my opinion I think maybe some things takes a little bit extra time at the moment when I try to learn them and when I try to implement them but hopefully uh, in the long run it's gonna save me time because maybe I can prevent some injuries because I I already could see them coming and instead of rehabilitation mm -hmm. I could could training that time 
instead. So yeah, so it's I think a, it's more of an investment you're, yeah, you're yeah, telling us. So, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But then, of course, it's also difficult to know what to choose. But I, I think uh, when I met Maria Therese a few years ago, um, yeah, I, I got very impressed. And yeah, by her whole um, knowledge and everything, I am. Um, yeah, I could really feel the difference also. And I think to get that aha feeling <laughs> is something that is really important when you want to try new things because yeah. um yeah it, it was a big eye opening for me yeah and for me this this process of you two is very interesting because yeah. you you have been writing since you were more or less an infant yeah. <laughs> i guess because your mother is a yeah. very well known dressage trainer in sweden so yeah. i'm just seeing that your whole upbringing mm. was was dressage riding and and you learned skills along the way mm. and then here comes this norwegian veterinarian mm. who has a phd in biomechanics and yeah. she uh, did she give you a different perspective i think um when you when you ride and train you get a lot of um inputs and info on what to do with the horse, like mm. maybe a little bit more bend or, but with Maria Therese, um, she gave me an insight in what I actually do on the back of the horse more than just like touching mm. a little bit more on the inside rein or the outside leg. It's, it's so much more complex. And um, it's also very interesting for me to um, use that knowledge on my students because even if they are on a much lower level, it it gives such a big difference for both the horse and the rider and, and also the feeling. And I think that's when the when when it starts to feel like a dance and that you're one as one with the horse. And mm -hmm. so when you know what you do with your own body, it's so much easier to also ask the horse for yeah, what, and, what you and want. And you were to touching do. upon this a bit mm -hmm. earlier, Maletta. So I think you talked about art and you're talking about feel here. And yeah. I think all of us would <laughs> yeah. say that that particular feel or when the horse mm -hmm. and the rider is in harmony, that's something that we almost feel is 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 like magic. Mm -hmm. And here you come picking that magic apart a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so tell us, yeah. tell us how you do that and how you would work with yeah. Johanna. I think it doesn't matter which rider you're working on, but I think the, the problem in our sport is that we often talk about symptoms. Mm -hmm. We talk about mm -hmm. something that we see as a as a symptom and not like the original problem because we don't have the tool for the analysis. So even though it's a lameness exam or it's evaluating the horse rider interaction related to technique, it comes down to be able to analyze the segments. And that is, I think, maybe one of the things that we discussed in the beginning and how can you as a trainer start to analyze your riders or mm. your students correctly instead of like saying that they are out of balance or you're not sitting in the middle of the saddle or mm. like it's the symptoms. Mm. And I think uh, that's like the, the common things with these two uh, system, if it's life or if it's rib, it, it brings us down to being objective and staying into a system of, of segment analysis. And I think that's the so most important of one of the classics then so mm -hmm. let's say that i i look at a rider or maybe i'm riding myself and i'm let's say collapsing in one side mm -hmm. uh, do you do you mean that as a symptom that is, is it, a symptom is it a vague me. description you mean yeah if I, if I tell you ellen you need to stop collapsing in your on your side mm -hmm. how can you change that you don't know how to change <laughs> okay. it okay so you need very precise information to be able to understand how you should change it and I think that often in our sport, we talk about that. We're saying that, oh, you need to train your balance and you need to be more symmetri symmetric or you need to not collapse in your side. But you don't know if it was the head or the trunk or the pelvis or the feet or the hands. Mm -hmm. you, you don't know what the type of change you need to do to come in the correct position. And, uh, and that is the most difficult part. And that's why we need to, mm -hmm. to develop the competence in all of our trainers, because if you know the tool of how to analyze, ana do the analysis correctly, then you can give the precise aids and you can give like one comment and yeah, say that yeah. that's the only comment you need to think so about. Is this okay, Joanna? Could you tell us about one of the things you're working on yeah, together with Maria? I was just about to, because <laughs> I, I think um, before I met Maria Torres, I was looking at videos of myself. I was like, my left hand is always so much higher or like at least a little bit higher than my right hand. And I try to uh, hold on to a strap and I try to do like, just like push the, the, the hand down. But then I got in contact with you and I was like, yeah, I think I, I do a little bit of this. But and Maria Therese just explained to me that it's my rib case mm. that I have to 
think about getting a little bit lower and then like all of a sudden my hand also fell in place my head got straight and yeah my left leg could Some start more. functioning yeah, okay. so it's <laughs> so more finding the source yeah. of the problem yeah. you mean okay then not looking at the symptom but looking at the source mm. and understanding that in a specific system and that's so, like when when you okay we we talked about like the rib cage but yeah. that's actually the the trunk which is rotated yeah. in the wrong yeah. position mm -hmm. so when we talk about the lamenesses when we look at the vertical mm -hmm. movement going up and down the horse, yeah. then we now discussing the rotation of one segment mm -hmm. so and how does that affect yeah. the horse then is it, it do you see an effect by correcting a rider do you see an effect of the health and performance of how does it feel <laughs> <laughs> well um, from one, yeah, one thing is that I've had some issues with the left half pass. Yeah. So of course, if if I'm rotated in the wrong way, it's very difficult to ask my horse to travel mm. to the left. Mm. And just by thinking about that little, it's it's like half a centimeter. It's not mm -hmm. much, but mm -hmm. I mean, from the top to the bottom, it gets quite a big effect anyway. So, mm. well. Yeah, they are yeah. better now, my left half passes. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. And I think you won Lenz, uh, a very skilled Swedish veterinarian who was in the video we saw earlier as mm. well. Uh, he said that he works with both lameness and, mm. and performance issues in horses. Mm. And I think uh, a lot of the issues that you see, but like you were touching upon in your sort of background, that we do uh, find ourselves with a lot of horses in the clinic mm. that the only complaint is uh, sort of problems with the performance. Mm. And then it is a bit of a detective's work, right? To understand, mm. is this the horse or is it the rider? Or is it a combination of mm. both? And I think, as you say, motion analysis, understanding motion, having precise tools for that can really help us to find sources of the issues. And then I guess to try to distinguish, tell us more about like what is rider, what is horse? And I, I think, as you say, I think it's so important to be very precise in your examination. So, for example, in the clinic, if you had come to the clinic with the issue that something must be wrong with my horse because the half pass to the left is very difficult mm. then you need to like do the whole system you need to be able to analyze without the rider maybe the rider its own and then the horse rider interaction mm. and i think uh, now you have been able to create a tool which helps you being very objective in the in the lameness exam of the horse and also be able to put the rider up and see how does the horse change when you put the rider up yeah. And uh, if you also can then train the veterinarian or the, or the trainer to be able to analyze the rider as objective as you do with the horse, mm. then you have come a long way. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But that's exciting. And let's talk a little bit about how you use the slave technology mm. again. And also you, of course, you guys work together with the with, uh, biomechanics of the rider. And then you work with Johan Lenz mm. uh, with your horses. And he records with slave, as we heard, uh, when you come to him in the clinic and you mm. have these regular checkups. Mm. Um, but what we find very exciting and that is actually very new as a service is that you're actually able to then connect the rider and the veterinarian together to yeah. actually be able to collect more data mm. uh, about the horse. And let's have a little bit of a look at the, the tool. This is um, Slape. And as a veterinarian, you would have this view where you can touch the small, it's like a stick figure of a human almost up there with a plus where you can add the horse owner to the specific horse patient. Um, that means you would type in the email and then you'd send an invite to the horse owner so that the horse owner could continue to follow the horse and collect data. Uh, for you at home. And I know, Maria Therese, that you use this quite a lot with your horse mm. patients. I think we need to distinguish if it's related to like the only the health issues that you have. You have had a horse in the clinic and it's been lame and you've been treating it. And then you're sending home a, like a rehab program with the owner. And I think if you ask owners, I would say that many owners would say that, oh, it's a bit scary that you, you, you now you're put with all the responsibility of actually having the horse back into business. Okay, mm -hmm. you have a program, but you're not going to see the veterinarians until a few weeks. Mm -hmm. But with the sharing function, I've been able to look at those horses every week. I can see that uh, the owners don't feel alone because I'm like sharing the situation with them. Mm -hmm. And I also can follow up my program and see, okay, is the horse actually capable of, stepping up a level of training or is it too soon or maybe I need to increase more. Mm. So then I have a totally different the tool to to communicate in the situation where I'm not there. So optimizing and rehabilitation optimizing and rehabilitation. And also when it comes to performance, like for example, when you're out competing and you're not sure if, if the horse has responded well enough into the travel situation or the training or whatever, then you have the possibility to always be objective and pick up the small things that mm. the eyes don't even see. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, that, that is mm, a problem. We haven't even touched yeah. really upon the subject, but mm -hmm. we know from research, of course, that the human visual system, we're super good at some things. We're super good at what we would call pattern, pattern recognition, mm -hmm. but we're actually a little bit lousy when it comes to this biomechanical pre precision. That is, especially when the horse is running quickly because our eyes are a little bit slow. It um, goes fast. Yeah, it goes mm -hmm. fast. It mm -hmm. goes fast. So you use it in a bit of a preventive way. And let's have a look at um, another view of, of the application, because this is would be your end, Johanna, of mm -hmm. this application. When Johan Lenz, your veterinarian, is inviting you to follow your own horses, and let's say that is during a period of rehabilitation, for example, mm -hmm. then this is the view that you would have. You can do the recordings, of course, with the horse running, and you would get this type of data back. The data display is not as big as it is on your side, Maria Trias, right, mm. on the veterinarian uh, view, but at least you do see that you get quality recordings and in this way you can easily communicate with your veterinarian. Mm -hmm. And of course, Johanna, you can always, uh, with your high performance horses, you could sort of flip the coin <laughs> and actually follow them even before you have an yeah. issue. And that's, you know, my heart is really in yeah. this because yeah. we want to turn this business yeah. into being more preventive. Yeah. We want mm -hmm. to help horses before they yeah. become lame. Mm -hmm. To be honest, Maria Trias, when we see horses in the clinic, it is quite common that the issue is already there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we want to catch the problem before it sort of catches on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think one important function related to this as well is that some horses actually functioning very well even though they have low degree of asymmetry mm -hmm. and you know when you get the horses into the clinic and you you expect them to be like symmetric mm -hmm. because that's what that's the only thing you have as a reference frame but if they are not symmetric then you try to block them and get them symmetric mm -hmm. And maybe that horse has a low mm. degree of asymmetry, mm. which is actually quite okay for that horse. Mm. Mm. But by following up over time, you've been able to to have something to compare with all the time instead yeah. and, and see the individual as one instead of... Yeah. Because I, Johanna, I guess you feel like there are slight things in your horses' bodies mm. that you work with all the time, right? Yeah, like on myself. I mean, yeah. we, we all have, have our asymmetries anyway. Yeah. But yeah. And I think... Um, as you say, to, to work like this, I can totally prevent uh, injuries before they happen. And we can can also adjust the workload um, if we feel that maybe we have to step a little bit back or, as you said, step up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, I could also see uh, from the point of selling horses, yeah. if you have, mm -hmm. you get a new veterinarian um, that then also can then see how the horse has been years and years back. Um, must be easier for for them also to to see if it's a normal asymmetry or uh, or something mm. yeah yeah and this is really one of the interesting points i think mm. for the future and let's talk more about that mm. but um that exactly as you say following yeah. the horse over time understanding how yeah. it responds yeah. with with this type of position mm. in the motion pattern to the training that we do mm. that's when it becomes really exciting mm. i think yeah. to be able to modify what you're doing while you're doing mm. it to prevent mm. things from, mm. from, you know, being that type of repetitive load that mm. we know is going to be damaging in the end. So mm. uh, being on that, um, you know, right side of that threshold and Maria is working with top athletes in, in human sports as well. Um, it, it's not always health bringing, right? It's Definitely. good to move. <laughs> All of us know that we need to move yeah. a lot to be healthy. And so do our horses. But for both ho horse and human athletes, staying on so the sound of side soundness, mm -hmm. uh, but still having a very high performance, mm -hmm. that is a big challenge that you guys are working with uh, mm -hmm. every day. I think day. When, when we talk to like top athletes, you have very specific feeling of how the horse should feel. Mm -hmm. But for us in the clinic, we often work with the riders and horses, which is a totally different level of, of feeling each other. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, to be able to follow them up, and yeah. see them uh, as important as mm -hmm. the top athletes mm -hmm. and follow them up and, and see the, the, the measurements every week, mm -hmm. every month. Then the owner I felt like they, they are not alone. And yeah. I also know that the, the program that you put into the horse is mm -hmm. at the level that it should be. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, and I think that's an important point, at least in my heart, there's a very strong feeling that all, all horses are important. And uh, of course, these top athletes and you guys who are top athletes, it's really impressive what you do. And I think you inspire all of us uh, who are just mm -hmm. regular riders. Uh, but uh, just look at the mass of horses out there and the health improvement that we could do if we would be able to preventively look at them.
Uh, and we'll actually now go into video clip where we see one of the our Swedish veterinarians uh, working with riding school horses. So Florian Lackner, who is a, a top veterinarian in the, in the south of Sweden, uh, who is going to tell us a little bit how he works with one of his clients who is uh, a riding school. Mm. And they do follow their horses over time. So mm. we hope to do good not only for the top horses, but mm. also for all the other horses out there. My name is Florian. I'm working as a horse vet since uh, over 20 years and um, I run together with our team uh, the Horse Clinic, His Clinic Florian LAB HKF with two positions, one in Kungsbach and one in Landwetter. We work significant and focused with orthopedic cases and sports medicine. We use sleep uh, on a daily basis in our clinic. We don't film all horses yet. Um, we are planning for it. It will be a part of our system. It's one of the best tools I've ever seen on the market and this will change our daily work. We just started to use slave uh, even on, a, on an interchange level. This is uh, why we started with two horse owners. That they film the horses at home, send them in. We go together through the analysis and discuss the plan for the future. And this is also our, will be our model in the future that we will collect sequences and we will go through it after a year and make a plan out of this. The main benefits for us, we don't know really exactly how good we will be, but it's, it's a really good tool. It's, um, it will help us to see some things, some small, small things we haven't found yet. It, it will also help us not to make mistakes and we all do. Um, this is the future. Slave hopefully also will change all these videos we get on Messenger, email, WhatsApp and we discuss with horse owners. We have a more objective, objective tool where we can collect our film material for the future and even make an analysis and it's a good point for a discussion. The sharing function will be a great tool for us, uh, also in, in, in form of rehabilitation. The client is always quite alone with the horse in the stable during the rehabilitation phase. And there we can re really connect, discuss and have an objective analysis how the way is going right now. So I think this will be the future for us as well. My name is Charlotte Wettberg. Uh, I have a bachelor degree in equine studies. Uh, together with my partner Ida Heldal, we run a riding school in Valberg, Sweden. Uh, we have about uh, 40 horses and as you know with uh, that many there's always someone with an issue. We have uh, been testing sleep during this uh, fall. We have chosen 12 of our horses uh, who has either an uh, history of issues or an actual ongoing case or someone's um, that we have a gut feeling that they might get an issue in the future. Sleeping our horses over a period of time gives us and our vet uh, the ability to uh, find their baseline in their movement patterns. Then we can easily see if they change, if they get worse or better or stays the same. Before sleep, we used to send a lot of uh, WhatsApp videos to our veterinarian. Uh, since we started using sleep, it is an easier communication uh, with our vet and it saves us time. Uh, and also all the data is saved in one place and easy to find. One of our horses had uh, an issue about six months ago uh, and we uh, treated him uh, several times, but lameness kept uh, coming back. Finally, I, we think we managed to find the main, main problem. Um, and now we uh, sleep him one, once a week uh, and that uh, confirms for both us and for our vet that um, he's still okay and uh, gives us the confidence to carry on with his training. The reason we wanted to try sleep uh, is because we really care about the welfare of our horses. We think it makes it easier for both us and our vet to make the right decisions. So we do hear Florian here talking about um, different WhatsApp videos that are being sent. And I think for me, at least, uh, this has been one of the key uh, issues I wanted to target with Slave uh, to create a tool that actually improves 
this communication. So partly gives you objective data, but also gives you the option to actually communicate uh, and help, you know, writers and veterinarians to do a better job. Mm -hmm. But the team around the horse is actually bigger than that, right? So, um, Johanna, tell us, you have a yeah, farrier. I have my farrier, my physio, and uh, of course my vet, Johan Lenz. And, uh, well, also, of course, Maria Tudias. <laughs> <laughs> but what I find uh, is really important is that uh, the people in my team are curious and open for new uh, technology or new, um, yeah, information, education. And... All of them are working together in a very good way. Um, my farrier and my vet has a very good, um, yeah, good talk every time we have some issues with the horses, or um, and also, um, yeah, together with my physio, we can discuss uh, if we if we notice something different. So it's a, it's a very good thing and very important with a good team around the horse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we need to stress, right, that mm -hmm. they are actually prey animals. So mm -hmm. they are not only nonverbal, so of course they can neigh and say a few a few sounds, mm -hmm. but it's actually the body language that mm -hmm. we have to interpret to know mm -hmm. if they're staying healthy mm -hmm. and specifically that sort of biomechanics of the motion that tells them tells us if mm -hmm. they're going to be lame or not. Yeah. And I think all of us have, have met horses along our horse lives that are actually willing to give us very, very much, even though they struggle. Mm, mm -hmm. uh, and you are here going to be sort of the interpreter of your horses yeah. in this team. Yeah. So you can say your rider feel. Mm. Uh, but it might actually also be that horses don't object to being ridden or being, training, mm. tra being trained, even though they might be um, having orthopedic problems. So that means so some kind of low degree la lameness. Mm. Mm. Um, and they can even perform at very high levels and still have a bit of these issues. Mm. But we come back again to your point earlier, Maria Trias, mm -hmm. that um, sometimes we talk about symptoms. So if your farrier would call your physio or your physio would call your vet <laughs> or you would call your biomechanics uh, <laughs> position trainer. And, and uh, like, uh, how do we avoid then talking just about symptoms, but talking about that root cause of the motion? I think that, of course, the most important is that we can have a tool that can analyze the horse. But... Uh, we need also to educate the, the trainers and the veterinarians to analyze the rider because in the end, it's about the horse rider interaction and we need to understand every piece of it and uh, not just, again, talk about the symptoms, but dig into the original problem. And I think what is very good with, with Slipe tool is that you have the ability to be able to do the recordings in very strict conditions. So you've been guided to like trot how many s steps and in this and this view. So you actually can educate all of the team in doing the analysis of the horse in the correct way. Mm. And uh, hopefully we can do that with the riders in the future as well. But uh, yeah, somewhere, this is so a very means... good start for us. <laughs> yeah. Have you had a lot of lousy WhatsApp media videos, you <laughs> mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I yeah, think it's, so. it's so difficult mm. sometimes when you get videos with different views, like the, they're riding on a circle, mm. riding on different lines. And, mm. and uh, you know, the eye is so difficult to pick up the good patterns if you don't see things in a good system. So it brings me back to the system again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I yeah, think that's, yeah. uh, so if yeah, everyone learning, can be in yeah. the same, then yeah. it's, uh, it's I think we're learning team. here that we need to have a very systemized way of both with, uh, with our eyes, mm -hmm. um, looking at, at the motion of the rider and the horse. Mm -hmm. We have to have good conditions. So we have to maybe look at horse and rider in these very specific situations, if mm -hmm. I understand you mm -hmm. correctly. And then we have to have objective data mm -hmm. to uh, really be able to, to nail down the specifics of what we're seeing. And validated data and a validated well. system, mm -hmm. yeah. And then to help your team around the horse, then we need to create some kind of communication vessel, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So that so that we can really build the team around objective data. Yeah, yeah. No, I have a, a lot of hope for the future, yeah. and I think with that we'll wrap it up for today. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, you. Johanna de Boya, for coming, and Maria Tres Engel. And thank I you. really thank you for tuning in and watching us, and I hope to see you next time. <laughs>